Grace, thank you so, so much. Thank you. All right, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, um, in case you're just joining us, um, my name is Yo, and, and um, I am the, I'm an actor, I'm a producer, I'm a director, and um, um, a host. I, I anchor events and all. Um, and then I'm officially welcoming you to the third edition of the N NCDC NYSC webinar. This is targeted to prospective core members um, um, for this particular quarter. And then we are have, um, like we just love to say, we have our, our guys at the top with us here today. And um, uh, we just want to quickly recognize them. Um, we have with us the DG of NYSC, Brigadier General Shwaibu Ibrahim. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Is the DG there? All right. Um, I'm sure. I'm sure he's with us. And then also, I want to quickly recognize our host for today. Um, that is um, the DG of NCDC, Dr. Chikwe Ihekwazu. Good morning, sir. Good morning, DG. Good morning, you all. Good morning. Yes, I'm Good here. Morning. Thank you very much. Good morning. Yes. And, uh, welcome to all our uh, colleagues that are about to start a very exciting phase of the uh, journey. So uh, welcome to everyone that joined us. Yeah. All right, sir. All right. Also, we have with us um, um, joining the DG today, we have um, Mrs. Christy Uba, Director of ICT at the NYSC. Um, good morning, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You're welcome, ma'am. Uh, oh, okay. So I can see the DJ of NYC. Okay, Mr. Sean, sir. Well, yeah. How are you? I'm very fine. Thank you, sir. Brigadier General Shribu Ibrahim. Thank you so, so much, sir. Thank you very much. You're welcome, sir. And also joining us today is um, Director of Core Mobilization at the NYSC, Mrs. Victoria Angle. Good morning, ma. Morning. Yes, ma. Good morning. Okay. And uh, we also have with us um, Dr. Yaya Disu, head of RISCOM at the NCDC. Doctor, are you there? Yes, good, mo good morning. Good morning, DG, uh, NCDC, DJYC. Good morning, y'all. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, sir. Yeah, and then with us today also is the NCDC stroke NYSC Safe Core uh, Camp Reopening Project um, um, project lead, that is Dr. Oyelado um, Okunro Mati. Um, just love to call her Dr. Lado. Dr. Lado, good morning. Good morning, y'all. Good morning, yeah, yeah. Uh, DG NYSC. Good morning, DG NCDC. Good morning, colleagues. Okay, yeah, good morning. And then we have um, a serving core member join us um, also um, because he would also say a thing or two. I have Ladi uh, Damola with us. Ladi, are you, are you there? Yes, I am here. Ladi Damola, thank you so, so much. Um, um, even though you're in black. Uh, I'm coming. <laughs> but it's okay, it's okay. We just have to move on. But, all right. All right. Thank you so much, Ladi, for joining us this morning. Okay. Um, like I said to prospective um, core members, this is the third um, one we're having. Uh, we've done previously twice. And then um, this um, program today is the to educate you the importance of um, um, safety measures that you have to follow when you're in camp. Um, so without um, talking much, it's important for us to go straight to um, having the national anthem. Um, I hope that um, our guys, them are ready for that. Let us have the anthem. And then afterwards, we'll have a welcome address by the DG of um, NYSC, Brigadier General Shraibu Ibrahim. Um, if we're ready, please, um, let us have the anthem. And right about now. 
And then please, the guys, don't forget the poll. Please make sure you go there to, to drop those questions. It's important, please. All right. So can we have the anthem, please, if we are ready? Can we have the anthem? I can see the smile on everyone's face, just reciting the anthem. <laughs> I can see, I can see Chimizy smiling at, at not the anthem. Thank you so so much, everyone. All right, um, without wasting too much time, um, it's um, please if you're not saying anything, you can just help us mute your mic um, so that we can hear everyone clearly instead of us um, just um, going straight to. Um, so that we don't get disturbed by others, okay? Um, it's also important because we are doing this for intending core members. Uh, I think it's also important for us to have the, um, the NYSE anthem. Um, if the guys are ready, let us also have that, um, the NYSE anthem right now. I think it's, it's important because these are intending core members, yeah? So um, let us have that. Mm. <laughs> Reciting this anthem takes my mind way back to Kevin State, where I actually did my own. <laughs> I'm telling you, this is <laughs> it took my mind back to Kevin. I'm telling you. <laughs> mm. uh, flash is now in my head. All right. <laughs> That's why I see. I'm telling you. Okay, so um, we will have the welcome address, then the opening remark uh, by the DG of NCDC, and then, then the project lead, Dr. Ladun, will talk to us about some measures in place to sustain the safety and YSC camp. Um, and then the panel discussion will go straight to that. Then, um, and of course, we have uh, the core members also saying one or two things. Um, that's the serving core member. And then um, core members as champions of um, healthy, um, of, for health uh, uh, security. That's Dr. Disu, who's going to talk to us. Then, then we have an entertainer. She calls herself the entertainer, um, um, Tenny the entertainer. So she's going to join us also today. She is a um, COVID-19 survivor. So she's definitely going to talk to us um, before we go straight to the closing remark by the DG of NYSC. But first, let us um, open the floor. Um, please, um, professor, core members, don't forget, send the link to your colleagues, 
so that they can join us um, today because it's important what we are going to discuss today. Send the link, link to your fellow intending core members so they can join, yeah? Um, okay, and then um, let us just go straight. Um, let me have, um, let us have the welcome address by um, Brigadier General Shribu Ibrahim, the DG of NYSC. Um, thank you so much, sir. Um, for joining us one more time. Thank you very much. The uh, general NCDC, our team, the directors and staff of the NYC, my prospective core members, core members, ladies and gentlemen, it is a pleasure and honor to address this country. So first, I want to congratulate the prospective core members having so little past the examination and be ready for this kind of call. And I want to appeal to them to this situation very, very seriously. Because uh, the NCDC and the Senate Committee, the President's Senate Committee, has played a very, very important role for the safe return to the community of our house. And uh, so far, we have had a very wonderful working uh, relationship and a partnership. We want to urge you that you must listen attentively to this uh, discussion today. And uh, I want to read on record appreciation once again to the NCDC, the Federal Serving Committee, for the interest, for the well care of the government. Because we know for their support and uh, their commitment to this project. We want to and love for core members and interests are shown on the NYC. So in addition to the head talk on the safety protocols we are supposed to observe in camp, I also want to appeal to you prospective core members to take security very, very, very critical. So that when you are going to report to camp, you ensure that you must be security conscious, you don't put yourself in harm's way where you are going to report. You must not travel at night, and we have all our addresses that will be available to you so that uh, where there are issues on your journey to your place of program assignment uh, to your state of uh, service, there are areas where there are challenges, either the state secretariat, uh, colleges, the barracks, either police, army, or thereabout, uh, you can always contact. And once you are traveling, once it is six o'clock, it is as well as you cut short your journey and pass the night in these designated areas that I have mentioned. Our numbers will available to you where there are issues, please reach out to us. So we have conducted, as I said earlier, uh, several camps successfully with the support and guidance of the NCDC. I are coming on board at this material time. It has to be reinforced and so that we don't experience anything. Please, you must follow strictly to the guidelines and then be what? Be law abiding. Thank you and God bless you once again. Thank you so, so much, sir. Thank you. That's the DG of NYSC, Brigadier General Shraibu Ibrahim. Thank you so, so much um, for those um, few words. And then it's very, very important. I also quickly recognize um, the presence of um, the NYSC directors. Um, we, um, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Sorry, I couldn't, um, I didn't have everyone's name. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us um, and then for being there with the DG. Thank you. And then um, also thanks to our media, our partners, uh, World Health Organization, and that's WHO Nigeria. And also we have the Center for Communication and Social Impact, CCSI. Thank you so, so much for partnering with us on this um, third um, um, edition you know, of the program. Okay, I will go straight to our, like we, we say, the Babonile, the man that actually brought us, the Gidibam Gidibam. <laughs> uh, I'm talking of none other but the TG of NCBC, Dr. Chikwe Mihebrazu. Good morning, sir. My God, it's all. <laughs> Thank you. you are, I'm not sure I've received such a general, a generous introduction. Uh, in the past, but, uh, let me first acknowledge uh, my uh, brother, DG NYSE uh, General Schwab, and uh, and your team, 
and for the incredible collaboration we have had over the last uh, one and a half years uh, in uh, restarting this critical program that has affected every adult in Nigeria in a very special ways. Whether you've gone through a tertiary institution or not, one way or the other, your life has been influenced by the National Youth Service that we all do. Um, but also let me welcome uh, everyone that is uh, participating in organizing this and critically our prospective uh, core members who are beginning about to start a very important journey in your lives. Now, um, I won't go into the situation in Nigeria with COVID. You've all been living witnesses to one of the most extraordinary periods in humanity. Uh, where we have been challenged as a world with a new virus that did not exist more than uh, one and a half years ago that has now taken the lives of more than four million people globally. Uh, so you have to put that into perspective. Uh, you know, very few things uh, from wars to uh, viruses to accidents, very few things can take so many lives within a, such a short period. So. I think we will all reflect about this period for many years to come. And the fact that you're able to do your youth service despite uh, this, despite some of the other challenges in Nigeria really is credit to the incredible leadership of NYC at the moment that has succeeded in working with us to make this possible. Uh, when we just started uh, trying to think how to uh, get our country back in motion, NYC was one of the most proactive uh, organizations and one of the priorities of government and uh, knowing that we can't lock down the country uh, forever. So we took on this incredible journey with uh, many of our colleagues on this call to find a way uh, to, yes, uh, keep safe, uh, prevent uh, transmission of this new virus, but also restart critical parts of our, our national life. So we've been able to do that. Uh, thankfully, with the leadership of the federal government, we've also been able to uh, mitigate to a large extent the impact of the pandemic in Nigeria and limit uh, transmission, limit the deaths. Yes, we have lost uh, over 2,000 people in, in Nigeria, but um, still, compared to many other countries, I think everyone will agree that we have done uh, fairly well to the, uh, up to now. But this battle is not over. Uh, we are, like you know, we are beginning to see a slight increase in cases, uh, primarily in Lagos, but also in a few other states. So um, the mistake we can all make when we are dealing with the virus is to think that it has gone away. It definitely has not gone away, and we have to sustain um, what we've been doing in order to keep this fragile successes that we have achieved uh, together. So in camp, there will be some limitations. If you hear about your story in camp, your story might not be exactly the same. There will be some limitations on what you're able to do, how you're able to engage. Please, it is for our success. The, the alternative is to postpone camp uh, for the next few years. And none of us wants to do that. So whatever limitation you have in the way you want to live, please compare that not to how it could be, but uh, how it was in the past, but how it could have been without the leadership of NYC in driving this forward. So we have found a way, uh, and we have done this fairly successfully uh, over the past few uh, months now to start the program, but instituting certain mechanisms to keep yourselves uh, safe, but also to keep uh, the program going. So please, we need your co collaboration. This is not a situation where um, NCDC or NYC will be going around policing everything you do. We don't really have that uh, time energy. We rather spend that time uh, walking towards your progress. So please walk with us, walk with our colleagues in the States, um, walk together with each other, hold each other accountable for what you do. If you see someone doing the wrong thing, you are now a, a very important member of NYC. You will become. So once, you, once you're at that stage, you have to hold each other accountable uh, for what each other, what you all do. So uh, let me just end by saying, you know, I welcome you, uh, join my brother to welcome you uh, to this one year that you're going to spend in national service. Um, this is an extraordinary year. You're spending it 
in the middle of a pandemic uh, with a few restrictions, but it's also an incredible opportunity to be part of the response. Everybody that has gone through NYSC in the last few months is now uh, an advocate, an ambassador, a participant in, in health security and in public health. Every member of NYSC has now been invited into what we need to do to keep our country uh, safe and progressive. So I welcome you to this family. I wish you uh, all the best as you work with us in driving this agenda forward. And I look forward to celebrating with you when you finish your youth service in, in about a year's time from today. So um, have a, a good time in camp, uh, be disciplined Nigerians like we want you to be. And remember uh, above everything is keep healthy and keep secure as the DG has said, and do your best to make sure that you come out of this uh, safe, strong, alive, and ready to serve your country for the next year. So on those few uh, notes, I'd like to thank everyone that has uh, contributed to putting this program together. Uh, we've continued to do this. We will continue to do this. Uh, it takes a lot of effort. Uh, so thank you to the teams in NYC, in uh, NCDC, and all our partner organizations who help us in putting all of this together. So thank you very much. Have a great webinar. Th thank you so, so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for that, um, for that um, opening remark. In case you're just joining us, that is Dr. Ichikwe Ikweazu, the, the DG of NCDC. Uh, that's our, the landlord uh, that uh, brought us in here. And uh, please, prospective core members, don't forget, it's important for you to please uh, go to the poll now. Please make sure that you drop your comments. We are ending that in the next two minutes. Please, we are ending in the next two minutes. It's important. And also send a link to your colleagues so they can join. We still have time. Um, and a lot will be said today. A lot will be learned today. All right, I'm going straight to um, uh, Dr. Herself. Um, I'm talking of um, um, Dr. Um, Ladun. She is going to talk to us about the measures in place um, to sustain the safety of NYSC can. Yeah. Um, Dr. Ladu, um, are you there? Uh, yes, I'm here. Good morning. Uh, uh, good morning. Is the project lead. Don't forget, I said <laughs> that earlier on, and then um, she she will talk to us now. Doctor, you you welcome. Okay, thank you, uh, DG NYC. Once again, uh, thank you for joining us, uh, DG NCDC. Uh, thank you for taking time out of your leave. DGNC, this is actually on leave. We have to pull him out of leave to talk to us this morning. Uh, we appreciate all the directors uh, from uh, NYC for joining this meeting. Uh, first of all, let me appreciate uh, Acting Director Special Duty, uh, Alaji Musa Abubakar, uh, for being with us from the inception, working with us on this project. Uh, thank you for uh, the collaboration and the support. Uh, also permit me to uh, welcome the presence of uh, Director ICT, this is Christy Uba, uh, your recognized ma, uh, as well as the Director of Course Mobilization NYC, Mrs. Victoria Ango, uh, Mrs. Adenike Adeyemi, Director of Press and Public Relations NYC. Uh, you are all highly recognized. Uh, I would like the host to give me the right to share my slides. Uh, permit me to share my slides so that I can, um, the core members will be able to uh, see and follow through with the presentation. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, so I would like to welcome all the core members as well. Uh, to this third edition of uh, the NYC uh, Safe Orientation uh, Webinar. Uh, it's been a long journey. Uh, we started this since last year, and uh, we want to appreciate uh, NYC for their collaborations and the support in this regard. Uh, for um, another batch of NYC camp opening uh, later this month, 
it's important to inform and educate the NYC prospective core members on what is expected of them in camp so that it won't come like uh, a kind of a culture shock and um, they would have information and knowledge on where to go to get the appropriate um, information. Uh, so as a form of a background, uh, what exactly is this COVID that we're talking about? Uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic uh, actually started as far back as uh, last year uh, for the country, Nigeria, we uh, diagnosed the first COVID-19 case uh, in February 2020. Uh, the first was in Nogun State. And uh, following this, uh, looking at the number of countries that this uh, outbreak has affected, WHO World Health Organization declared it a pandemic. Uh, as far back as March uh, 2020. Uh, so why bringing this up is to show us how long this outbreak has been. Uh, we've been dealing with this now for over a year. And that is to give us uh, impression that this is not, um, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. And uh, it requires a diligent uh, patience. It requires uh, some energy as well as some passion uh, so that we don't get uh, consumed in the process. Uh, for the country, uh, as at uh, yesterday, uh, we've recorded over 169,000 cases uh, with uh, 2,000 deaths, uh, which gives uh, Nigeria about 1.3% uh, case fatality rate. And on the right, uh, the chart is showing the distribution across all the states in Nigeria. This shows that this outbreak has occurred uh, in every state uh, of uh, the country. And as prospective core members will all be posted to every state in Nigeria. So this is to inform us that uh, when it comes to COVID-19, no state is spared. And we need to ensure that we keep following up on the necessary guidelines and the protocol for uh, to prevent um, and protect ourselves uh, across the country. Uh, you also recall that as a control strategy, the country uh, went into lockdown last year to limit the transmission. Uh, this affected all sectors uh, of businesses, education, aviation, and um, education, closure of educational institution from primary to secondary to tertiary, including uh, orientation camps. Uh, but following a better understanding of the COVID-19 infection, and uh, decline in the uh, number of cases, uh, country comments faced ease of lockdown uh, and uh, opening of programs and activities last year. And following that, uh, we, with, um, uh, with the support of uh, presidential task force then, uh, which is now presidential steering committee, and due collaborations of uh, NYC and NCDC, NCDC actually uh, drove the process of reopening the NYC camp. And we work in collaboration with the NYC management to develop a protocol uh, for safe reopening of NYC orientation camp across uh, the country. Uh, this protocol currently is being implemented across all the camps and is the same protocol that we're going to be implementing for this batch of uh, NYC orientation activities. And it's important uh, that we put you through the protocols, what is expected, uh, what and what uh, are you required to do while in camp and how to protect yourself. Uh, the goal of this is to ensure safe opening, a smooth operation of the camp, to ensure that we have uh, a well-established uh, best practices and we don't eventually have outbreaks in camps uh, at the end of the day. Uh, so the, the, the goal of uh, this orientation is to familiarize ourselves with what are the processes and expectations that is expected of us at camp, and to also inform core members, uh, what are the things you need to prepare for, uh, for camps, as well as understand uh, roles and the process in camp, and your concerns, some of your concerns will be able to address it and uh, be able to answer some questions uh, that you may have and also guide and direct you to where to get accurate information as regards uh, COVID-19. Um, okay, so we'll quickly go through uh, the framework uh, for camp resumption for those that are going to camp mm -hmm. from uh, upper week. Um, for this batch B camp resumption, 
uh, camp reopened on the 27th of uh, uh, July, uh, according to the timetable available to us from NYSC. And this will run for uh, three weeks. And we expect about 1,200 to 1,500 core members for each camp. You know, in the past, we used to have a lot of core members for each orientation camp, uh, but we don't have that luxury now because of COVID-19. We need to ensure uh, that we limit the number of people in camp mm -hmm. per time and also ensure that um, uh, distancing, physical distance uh, is practicable within uh, the reasonable uh, number of uh, core members allowed in camp. And um, because of some processes that have been put in place uh, during res uh, resumption, uh, would also ensure that we space out resumption daily uh, for registration, for the initial four to five days re registration. We we'll expect core members to resume in batches. Uh, between uh, 300 to 500 core members resumption daily. Uh, this particular information will be passed across uh, to all core members on your portal by NYC, and you'll be given this particular date for resumption. We want to encourage core members to, as much as possible, adhere to uh, this uh, date that you are giving to. Uh, after the first stream in July, there will be another stream uh, in August uh, that will run till September, and we'll repeat the same procedure, the same guidelines uh, will be strictly followed through. And also would have the third stream, uh, which will be sometimes later in the year after the second uh, stream. Uh, so what is actually the first process of registration? Uh, once the uh, registration um, portal opens, you'll be able to log in to your NYC profile page uh, based on your specific uh, profile, profile. And on that, there would be uh, a pop-up button uh, that will guide you to a COVID-19 self-reporting form. We call it case investigation form. Uh, when this pop up and uh, you click on it, you'll be redirected to NCDC portal, uh, which is uh, as seen here. And uh, this portal, we want to encourage core members not to share this link with their colleagues because it is personalized. Once you click on that portal, you will see your call up number coming up. So if you share this, with other colleagues, they will not be able to fill in their details because this is a personalized um, link uh, for an individual prospective core members. And once you click on uh, the self reporting form, it takes you to the NCDC page with your NC NYC specific call up number. Uh, on this page, uh, once you reach this page, you'll be able to click continue. Uh, your continue means you proceed and the form will come up and you'll be able to fill in and enter into your details. Uh, the details involve your personal demographic um, uh, characteristics like your name, your age, your state, your address, phone number. After that, there are some specific uh, questions as it relates to uh, certain symptoms, whether you've experienced some symptoms in the past or you are experiencing certain symptoms now. Uh, there is another one that will lead you to uh, your uh, travel history. For those uh, that schooled abroad or they're just returning into the country for NYC, you'll be able to fill in uh, your travel details and when you entered into country and your uh, PCR uh, travel results. And after that, you'll be able to fill in your vaccination status. We know now vaccines are available and some of us have the advantage uh, of taking this vaccine. So, so some of these are the details uh, that will be required from you. So once you fill in all your details and you click submit, uh, a code will pop up. And this is the code that is also personalized for you, uh, to you and you need to print it, keep that code, uh, print uh, the COVID-19 testing slip. Uh, this is what will be required of you to enter the camp. Please note that without this, you may not be admitted in camp. Uh, you will be made to present this in camp and uh, you following that, you proceed to uh, conduct your hard duty test uh, before uh, you are allowed into the camp. So that is what we give you clearance to register as a core members. Uh, uh, so um, looking at this, uh, we've worked closely with uh, NYC 
top management uh, to ensure that certain measures are put in place. Uh, first, for your safety, uh, to ensure that we don't have outbreak in any of NYC uh, orientation camps, and also to ensure that you are comfortable as much as possible. So what are these necessities uh, that has been put in place for uh, uh, camp uh, orientation? Uh, first of all, is to ensure batching, which I've explained. Uh, we're going to resume a certain number of prospective core members per day. Uh, please kindly uh, oblige and resume the day you are given to resume. Uh, we're going to spread this out in the batch of um, about three to 500 core members for a period of uh, five days uh, for the initial registration. And um, you, are allow, you, you, are, you are mandated to fill the necessary self-reporting form on your portal page and download the uh, slip with your unique code and bring it to the camp for testing. Uh, on resumption at NYC camp, you are mandated to, uh, to be tested for RDT. Please kindly know that this test is free uh, to, for all core members. And we have ensured that certain infection prevention control measures have been put in place as such that you are, so you are to bring in your face mask while coming into camp with your hand sanitizer. Face masks are supposed to be worn at all time uh, in camp. Uh, though we are aware that it may not be inconvenient, but this is uh, the new normal. We are in, a, in an era where we have to just adjust and adapt to the new situation to ensure that we limit the transmission and we'll be able to carry on uh, with our normal activities, day-to-day -day activities as much as possible. And I want to uh, ensure you that we've also worked uh, with uh, NYC management to ensure that um, certain IPC materials are available. Uh, we have certain IPC uh, guidelines uh, as well as uh, information uh, being uh, posted across the camp that will give you necessary information on how to protect yourself. Uh, for suspected cases, uh, we've worked with the state uh, government to ensure that isolation centers uh, are available for um, to prospective core members and also uh, knowledge on COVID-19 disease and compliance with uh, prevention mm -hmm. protocols uh, will also be all going on uh, at intermittent in camps to give you uh, the necessary information and ensure compliance uh, within camp. Uh, so what are actually the concerns? Uh, for NYC, as well as the NCDC, we quite understand that there are a lot of things core members want to do in camp. Uh, but to us, uh, your safety is our priority. Uh, for NYC as well, your safety is the priority, and that is why uh, we've worked hand in hand to ensure that certain measures and guidelines are put in place uh, for you to also be com comfortable and also have fun uh, as much as you want to. So as NYC core members, we want to, to take responsibility. Uh, we will not be policing you all the time. Uh, we will not uh, be there all the time to ensure that certain things are done, uh, but we want individual uh, core members to have the necessary information and for you to take responsibilities. Uh, the guideline has been produced. Uh, this would also be on the portal page for you to go through and ensure that you get familiar with all the requirements and we want, to, we want you to adhere as much as possible uh, to all the guidelines, ensure that we, we maintain physical distancing within the camp. Uh, if you must go to the mummy market, please, let's ensure that we avoid crowd gathering within the mummy market. And um, we need to ensure that we wear our face mask consistently all the time, seek clarification as much as possible. And if you have anyone uh, that have any signs and symptoms related to COVID-19, please report early. We have camps and uh, we have camps uh, health officials and uh, across the camp, please ensure early reporting and um, cooperate with all camp officials as much as possible. Uh, we'll have our surveillance officers in camp with you. We'll have our IPC uh, officers in camp with you. We want to encourage you to cooperate with everyone in terms of adhering to the guidelines as much as possible. Uh, in terms of cautions, uh, measures have been put in place in, for your safety. And also uh, for the guideline, we have 
the, the official communication channel, uh, which you, and of course, you still have your uh, platoon uh, leaders uh, that you can communicate with and report to in case of any uh, incident. And also, uh, like I mentioned, everyone has a role to play. It is your duty, it is your role to take responsibility for yourself, uh, to protect yourself, and also to protect uh, your colleagues uh, as well. When you protect yourself, wear your face mask, uh, adhere to uh, the protocols, you are protecting yourself, you're protecting your colleagues, and mere by keeping uh, the camp safe and ensure that we don't have any incident at the end of the day. Because if we don't observe these guidelines and rules, uh, we may have changes in uh, NYC camp uh, procedures and protocols. Uh, the government may look back into reviewing the process and may not give the necessary clearance uh, for operations as well. So for the safety of yourself, for the safety of people coming uh, after you and to ensure that we, we continue to have uh, a smooth operation of an orientation camp, uh, we want to encourage you as much as possible to ensure that you take responsibility. Thank you for listening. All right, thank you so, so much, Dr. Ladon, NCDC, NYSC, Safe Camp Reopening Project. Thank you, ma'am, for that particular uh, one. And then, um, come members, I hope that you're, you're still there, you're listening. Please don't forget, keep sharing the link so that uh, we have more in, in prospective core members um, join um, today. And also, um, it's important for you that you can just send in your questions to the Q&A section um, on your screen right now. Send in your questions there so that um, it will be treated before, before the end of the program. Please, um, let's just do that ASAP. And don't worry, we are mindful. Um, a lot of you are using data and uh, You've not even started collecting Alawi, I know, but the Alawi will come. So let us just say, uh, please bear with us. We'll, we'll be fast with this and then um, uh, we will let you all go. All right. And then we're opening the panel discussion. And then um, um, for those on the discussion, we have the Oga himself, um, the DG of um, NYSC Brigadier General Shraibu Ibrahim. He's going to be there. And then we have, um, um, if Dr. Lato still has any other thing to say, she will also join. And then the serving core member, that is um, Ladi and Damola, he is also going to join us um, for this particular panel. Please don't forget, intending core members, send your questions to the Q&A session. Please, um, we are just waiting. We're waiting for you. All right. So to Dr. Lado, um, um, I would um, like to ask if COVID-19 vaccines will be given at the camp. And um, someone just sent that in and then, um, and then says that um, I've been immunized with the first dose in my state of residence and scheduled for the second dose by next month. So please, um, I, I don't know if Dr. Lado will quickly give us an answer to that. Uh, okay, so um, thank you, Yo. Uh, for um, the vaccine, uh, I, I would like to direct that to the DGNYC uh, to give some heads up why I had uh, one or two things as regards that. Thank you. Over, sir. Well, the, for the vaccination of core members, I know we had a work arrangement with the with the National Primary Health uh, uh, Development, Development Agency, and all just uh, core members were vaccinated in camp in the last orientation. And I'm sure this partnership will still continue. We want to advise prospective core members to please uh, comply. It's not compulsory, but it's advisable you do it. All of us NYC staff have done that. We have all been vaccinated, and uh, it's advisable you get vaccinated so that you can protect yourself and protect others. This will be made available uh, for, for you in camp. Thank you, DG, for that. Okay, so Dr. Ladin, you said you wanted to add something. Ah, okay, so yes, uh, as regards the COVID uh, vaccine, uh, I'm sure we're, we're all aware that uh, we finished the first batch. 
uh, of uh, the administration in the country. We're expecting another stock uh, by the end of this month uh, through August. And just like the DG has rightly mentioned, uh, uh, the DG is working, LYC is working uh, in conjunction with uh, MPA CDA to ensure that um, vaccines are available to core members once we have another batch in country. Thank you. All right, so um, this is to um, the DG NYSC. Um, um, someone sent in a question here. He said, um, what other items, if any, are we to report to camp with vis-a-vis -vis COVID-19 protocol, apart from the nose mask? Please, I did a medical fitness test around 26th of April, expecting that I will be deployed with batch A strain um, to but transferred to batch B. Um, am I going to undergo another medical fitness test or can, can I still use the one that I did in April? Yes, uh, that's good. Uh, well, as uh, the Dr. Ladu said, it is only those that, are, that have been tested and are found to be negative that are permitted in camp. As far as we are concerned, anybody that's going to go come into the camp or go out of the camp, you must be tested. So that one will no longer suffice. So you have to undergo another test. Even as a DG, all the orientation I go, I undergo tests. So you please prepare for another test when you come to camp. Then what other, what other things are they supposed to come to camp with, um, apart from the nose mask? The, the, Dr. Dr. Larry has clearly stated there, they have to come with their full smart face mask, sanitizers, and so on and so forth. And uh, the face mask, you come with not more, just one alone. You come with one that is washable, and uh, I can use for a limited time, and I change another. You, you need to protect yourself so you can protect uh, others. You read our platforms, read also information from the NCDC. Also, there will be Vanguard, uh, uh, COVID-19 Vanguard will be in camp that are going to enforce all this. So you have to ensure that you comply. If you don't comply, you'll be checked, and you can be disciplined on that. Everybody is mandatory to wear to observe all the non pharmaceutical protocol. And as I said, we we'll have an uh, enforcement vanguard in all the camps of the Federation that is expected to be, uh, to be, to, to be uh, followed. And I'm sure you good uh, persuade from our time, are going to join the vanguard to ensure that we enforce this. So we we'll have a seamless and a safe orientation exercise as we have done in the past. So yours will not be different. Oh, we expect for you to be disciplined and adhere strictly to the guidelines. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, NCDC staff will also be in camp with us and to also ensure that this is uh, uh, the, the, the non pharmaceutical protocols are in place and enforced. Okay, so um, 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 please, uh, the DG. Um, I remember the last time we, we the second webinar that we did, you mentioned some of the items that they should not come to camp with. A lot of people still don't know the items that they are not supposed to come to camp with. I remember you mentioned things like pressing iron, sharp object, and all those stuff. So if it is also possible, you still help us to just still tell the prospective core members so that they, they know things they shouldn't come with, even though we've mentioned things they should come with. The, the, this, is, this is an advice. They are not supposed to come with any harmful objects and uh, even iron and other things that will cause an electrical spark uh, for in the camp. And at the same time, on the drugs will not be tolerated. Any narcotic drugs will not be tolerated. We have our clinic, and thank God we have uh, staff in addition to the NCDC. We also have staff from the Federal Medical, uh, Federal Medical Centers in the States of the Federation, and also State uh, Ministry of Health. So they are going to ensure that we enforce it. National Drug Law for Agency will also be in camp. So anything that is on Africa, please don't bring it to the camp. And also, we want to appeal. Don't come to the camp with fake results. If you come to the camp with fake results, security agencies will be You'll be arrested and you'll be handed over to the police for prosecution. So it must be good Nigerian, it must be law abiding, and uh, so that anything, uh, you, anything we want to have or unethical that I do will not be used against you. And please don't uh, uh, get yourself involved on any unethical practices. Don't give bribe to anybody. Say you want to do posting here and there. It's, it's, it's illegal, 
uh, just learn to accept posting to other. You are asked the DGNYC are served as well. The DGNYC was also ESCO members, uh, Dr. Lavin, all those uh, uh, in this platform, including my directors and officials, were also once core members. So we know how, how uh, important the scheme is. So please come to the scheme, add value to the NYC, and uh, and make you be a patriot in Nigeria. I just on Thursday, I visited uh, the ex core member who wrote the uh, composed the NYC anthem. And it was an emotional for all of us because he feels fulfilled that NYC has not abandoned him because we appreciate his contribution to the, to, to the NYC and the country. If you look at the weddings of the Antel, it's quite philosophical. And I want to urge you to please go and study the weddings of the NYC Antel closely and ensure that you are a good Nigerian and be ready to put in your best in the service of your country. Okay. Thank you so much, DG. Another question here says, some of us have filled the case investigation form when we registered with Batch A. Due to restrictions in the number of NPCMs, we were pushed to Batch B. Are we going to refill these forms? Yes, once person is released, they will refill it again. They are going to refill the forms again once the person is released. So they should please monitor that dashboard and ensure that once the person is out, they refill. Thank and you. Then it's by stream one, batch B stream one. Batch B stream one. Yeah, batch exactly. B, batch stream B stream one. one. All right, sir. somebody wrote a question here. With this so much restrictions and all, will the camp still be fun with all this protocol? <laughs> 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 yes, Dr. Lado has said it, Dr. said it will be, be, be fun, but you know, should take responsibility and be careful. This, this is the fifth orientation we have conducted under this protocol. Yeah. And I can assure you that uh, we're not seeing anything new. It's just that you'll be seeing this new. But uh, all of there is a scholar of you, just follow the protocol. The form will be there. You enjoy the orientation camp. Because yeah. as core members, without orientation, I can assure you, I assume you are not a core member. So the form will be there. Just, uh, just take responsibility and be careful. That's all. Uh, uh, thank you so much. So let me quickly jump to Ladi, that is currently a core member, to tell us. If camp is actually fun, um, <laughs> you know what, what, what I did when I did my own. We did everything plus drama to dancing to beauty pageants, everything. We had a camp night. Yeah. Ah, so laddie, how is it? Uh, <laughs> good morning, everyone. <laughs> Standing on existing protocol. Good morning, DGNYC, DGNCDC, um, panelists and prospective core members. Um, good morning, Mr. Yo. Actually, um, camp was still fun. I was in Abuja camp in Kubwa, and we still had all our social events. We had our social nights. We had our beauty pageants, the Mr. Macho, the Miss NYSE. We had the dance. We had the talent um, games that went on. So everything was, we even had people who rapped. The, the guy who was the rapper was, um, he was the one that actually got the final prize for the talent um, game they did. But camp was still fun. Um, in as much as um, those restrictions were there, um, it didn't stop me having um, those fun moments and fun activities in camp. We even had uh, the cultural events that happened the last weekend before camp closed. That was, I think, the Saturday morning, where different platoons would um, speak a particular um, tribe in Nigeria and they would, you know, dress with their attires, their foods, their makeup, and, <laughs> and there would be a presentation all around. You know, it was really fun. It was, that still held. It didn't stop it. Everything was still physically distanced because we had enough space um, in the ground. So canopies were separated, chairs were distanced. So people didn't have to cluster all around, you know, and all that because, and we were few in camp, so. It was not the normal um, number we had. We had fewer numbers. I think we are about um, 800 in camp then. So that was December, 2020. So it gave enough room to still have the social events and still adhere to COVID-19 guidelines. Everyone had to put on their masks. So, you know, no one was scared of, um, ah, okay, uh, no one is wearing a mask. So people had masks, um, they were, sanitizers at specific points, there are basins to wash your hands with soap and water fixed at certain points around the whole camp. So, you know, 
um, that, that was there. Oh, okay, okay, so um, Ladia, I'll ask you this question also. While yeah. you were in camp, did you, did you guys have any case of any particular person, ah, COVID-19, this, this, that, and how did you guys handle the whole situation? Did you guys social distancing and all while you were there? Yes, our rooms, on a normal day, I heard the rooms are usually clustered. In my time, we had only, we we're only 10 in my room. Yeah. So I what I would say was- I wouldn't agree, oh. my time, <laughs> my time they passed on the us. I wouldn't agree this <laughs> year. I will go back and get <laughs> Ah. It was it was it was really cool because everyone had space. You be everyone in the room could interact easily, you know. So all those cases of theft and everything went because um, you knew everybody in your room. You could relate with everybody. Then also um, to the question you are asking um, about. Um, so basically, what happened was um, during our morning parade, we had a few people being called out. And initially, people were wondering what was happening because I think there was a little scale panic. But the camp director went around all the rooms at the end of the evening. That was when everyone had retired to their rooms. And she explained. It was, it was really amazing. We were surprised. We were shocked. But we were also happy because the camp director then went around all the rooms and explained to us why people were called out and sent home and what really happened. So everyone was able to keep calm. And the following day or two days after, they came and they fumigated the whole camp. And so we were like, oh, wow, we're safe. So. Ah, that's right. Please, please can we all put our hands together for NCDC and then? Uh, <laughs> please. You had that, they fumigated everywhere the next day just to put everything in, under control. Thank you so, so much for doing that. But, but DG, I will go back to NYSC so that they will not pack all of us. I told you. <laughs> they were pouring water to wake me up in the morning. And, uh, ah, ah, DG. Mm. All right. <laughs> All right, please, um, um, Dr. Yaya Disu, please, um, that is head of um, RISCOM or, um, for NCDC. Please also get ready because um, you are going to talk to us in a few minutes. I think I will just take one more question um, before, before Dr. Yaya yeah, yeah, will talk to Dr. Disu will talk to us. Um, um, and then he's talking to us about core members as champions of um, health and security. Um, if I don't have any more questions, I would just like to go straight to Dr. Disu. Um, if, if I don't have any more questions for now. Um, and then um, DG and NYC, I hope just like um, Ladi, the current serving core member said, all these measures are still put in place, will still be there and even better. DG, if you are there, sir. Yes, you know, uh, things are improving. Uh, uh, when we started uh, in November last year, it was 800 per camp, but things have, been, we have upped the game uh, with the advice of the NCDC. So all the protocols are still in, in place. Uh, all the protocols are still in place. And all we need to just, as uh, we said earlier with uh, Dr. Ladi, all the government, prosperity government must take responsibilities. Address strictly to the guard to the non pharmaceutical protocols. And as I said, we have an uh, enforcement banker. So because if you see without face marks, they, they, they know what action to take immediately. So just play by the rules. And that's all. The phone is still there. The phone is there. You only are going to pick uh, the, 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 our ladies who get husbands and the, <laughs> and the male commanders who get the wife from there. Please, uh, that's, that's nice. All right, so, um, uh, Dr. Disney, are you ready for us now, Dr. Disney? Oh, yes, I'm ready. All right, Doctor. Um, um, don't forget, Dr. Gisu is a um, risk come head for NCDC. Thank you so, so much. You have, uh, you have the floor now. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. And DGNYC, uh, DGNCDC, um, directors from NYC, as well as NCDC, colleagues, uh, core prospective members, and your, our uh, Hebrew moderator and uh, I say good morning all, and um, it's a privilege to address this uh, forum. Uh, I want to start with this joke. I remember the last time I gave this, the prospective core members then said, because my 
camera was on, was not on. Why is he hiding his face? Is he a Malian? <laughs> so they started putting comments on the chat board. And I said, today, I, I have to put my camera on. <laughs> so to, for them not to call me a Malian. OK. So uh, please, if the host can permit me to share my screen, uh, that, that would be lovely. So once again, I want to say we thank uh, DG NYC, who has always given us this uh, opportunity uh, to interact with core members, to enable them to, to enable them. Sorry, I want to put this in a uh, slide, this thing. Okay, so, so to enable the core members uh, to learn and then to be able to um, know what roles they need to play when they get to camp, uh, because this is very, very uh, important. So uh, first and foremost, um, I'm going to relate with earlier presentations, comments by the two DGs, and then the presentation by Ladun as reference to some of the interactions during the question and answer sessions. Uh, because um, I'm not going to be saying anything new, but it is how do we take responsibility now? And then how do we serve as champions? Our roles in the camp uh, does not I mean, what we do is not only when we're in orientation camp, but what is more important is when we get back to the community, where the real risk is there, because when you're in orientation camp, everybody comply with the, uh, with the protocol strictly. And so it reduces the risk for everyone. But when you're in the community and you don't have control over what people do in the community, should we join them or should we be a model to give them examples of uh, what they do and how they do things? So, uh, so today um, we would, the outline is why do we take responsibility, how to take responsibility, taking responsibility, so what, what does that mean? And then um, for COVID-19, what does it mean? Taking responsibility for COVID-19 uh, prevention and then qualities of a champion to guide us as to uh, how we uh, go about it. So uh, then the next thing now is, sorry, I'm just trying to put it in. Um, okay, yes, sorry, I right now. So at the end of this presentation, uh, the participant will be able to know the concept of take responsibility and understand the take responsibility campaign for COVID-19 prevention and apply the concept for playing their parts as champion of take responsibility campaign, as well as air security in Nigeria. So what is and why do we take responsibility? Uh, first and foremost, to thrive as an adult, you need to take responsibility for your own actions. Most times um, we attribute what happens to us to others, but we have forgotten that we are supposed to be internally in charge, take ownership, of the circumstances of our lives. And then while we are driving the purpose of our life, I mean, to achieve purpose in life, and life does not exist in vacuum. So there are bound to be challenges, frictions, and then we need to externally own the consequences of our action. It is when we have this mind shift that we'll be able to ensure that things work for us, but not that things happen to stop us in life. So taking responsibility when things go wrong is very crucial uh, because sometimes we don't get it right. Uh, yet it's not the time to, to, to give up, but it is the time to reflect and to learn from our mistakes. And it also contributes to building trust. People know that we're human beings and we're not infallible. We cannot uh, do without mistakes. Uh, like this quotation uh, quote by William Butler, he said, in dreams begin responsibility. So whatever we want to do, you must be ready to say, this is my life. I am ready to take responsibility. Another quote uh, is, and a step backward after making a wrong turn, it's a step in the right direction. So don't be afraid to make a mistake. How do we take responsibility? We we'll all see this picture. Who can tell me the name of this giant legend? Uh, you can write it on the chat box. Uh, I know that uh, the current generation, I don't know whether uh, some of us are familiar with this image. 
Okay, somebody said Nancy Mandela. Okay, okay, three people. So I think we all know. We all know. So uh, you need to choose to respond to life's challenges. It's a choice. Challenges will come. We can't avoid them. And then we also have desire to achieve great things. So we are consciously in charge of ourselves, and then we should be able to define what we want in life. It should be very clear. Because if you cannot, on your own, define what you want in life, it may be difficult for you to be champion for others or for a cause. You choose how you respond because challenges will come in the course of your career, but how you respond is what, what is more important. And then that means you have to be in the driver's seat of life. Like I said earlier, you appreciate that things happen for you, not to you. It is mindset. It depends on how you see things. A cup that is filled with water, not full, maybe half empty or half full. Somebody sees it and says, this cup is half empty. Another person says, this cup is half filled. That means there is still the same level, but we see it from different perspectives. And the way we see it determines our reaction and what we do. So, we need to learn to not to blame and complain. And we need to take action. So it moves us from position of victim to victor. And if something happens, instead of you to start looking for who is this, who is that, now, like, OK, what lessons can I learn from this? Oh, when you see a circumstance or an event is taking place, find out. What role do you have to play? Be intentional. Otherwise, you will be a victim. How do I use my talent here? We are part of a team. We have roles to play. Even though we are core members, but we have certain skills, talent, experience, ideas that we can use to contribute to the whole. And what am I going to gain from this? And what lessons do you want to learn from this? It's important to help you to maintain focus. So, and... Um, that means that is the only way we can strive better. Action springs not from thought, but from a readiness for responsibility. So just like for you to be successful in life, you must be prepared for the opportunities that lie ahead. When you are not prepared, when opportunities come, we rather see them as a threat. So the oral presentation is just A coach will always be a great help but it is the client who takes responsibility for implementing the agreed changes. Like you have, where you are serving, you have um, camp directors, you have different kinds of people, otherwise we invite people to come and talk to you. When you come out, you even have some serving call members who are in the previous batch and then who are to kind of guide you, but the choice is still yours to make at the end of the day. The difference you make is dependent on how you comply with instructions, and then how you use information for improvement. When you get any information, don't just discard it. Analyze the information. See how it relates to your context and then be able to know how to apply them meaningfully. And then let us not be afraid to take initiatives from ideas. And that is uh, the bottom line of creativity. So for COVID-19 prevention, and this is just summary of how we arrive at a take responsibility campaign that we're using to sustain the COVID um, fight in Nigeria. We launched this campaign in March 2020, and then the essence is to call all Nigerians to take responsibility to prevent and control the spread of COVID-19 in Nigeria. And this is meant to be implemented at all levels, individual, family, group organization, community institution, and leadership. Now, as core members, as individuals, you have responsibility to play in taking responsibility. As family as well, you are, you are a member of a family, uh, maybe your genetic family or family of an association or you belong to one organization. Now you are part of NYC community. So we all have roles to play. Now, we have five M's that we use to guide how we take responsibility, irrespective of your level. Whether at the level of individuals or at the level of group or organization, we need to model that is practice and demonstrate the preventive measures. So I call us to 
be um, models for these preventive measures. And then we, we are supposed to be able to map, that is to leverage on existing stakeholders and reach. Who are the stakeholders? Who can we work with? Who can we collaborate with in achieving this goal? And then of course, mobilize. We share and promote the take responsibility message using the existing channels, approaches, and opportunities around us. So we have these messages. Some of them are in flyers, some of them are um, um, soft copies. And then through our social media channels, we share this in information, not rumor. When we get any information we don't understand, we try and verify before we share them. How do we support mitigation? Is by ensuring that people understand the situation and use information in a way that will enable them minimize the impact of this uh, disease. So just like those things I said earlier. And of course, we need to be able to monitor by collaborating and providing regular feedback. That is updates, whatever we are doing to NCDs and all other stakeholders. There are ways to do this. When we go into the community, um, I'm sure there are local government officials where we work, and I believe these local government health educators, uh, they are there to really support us. And then we need to work with them. There's a lot to learn from them. And if you see anything, we need to be able to report. There was a time we, design, we designed a template uh, for them to support um, the core, core members and then take information and record activities that they carry out. So who is a champion? Um, I will just describe it this way. A champion is always enthusiastic about stepping into the ring. And uh, you know what that means. Uh, you, you, you know uh, the heavyweight champion of the world, that Nigeria, anytime he wants to get to the ring, and uh, then he's always uh, excited because he loves it, and uh, this is what he lives for. So for us to move from taking responsibility to, 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 for, for, for preventing COVID-19, we need to move to the level of being a champion. A champion must always allow themselves to feel the passions they have. Because what? Because it drives their motivation. So we need to get to that level and always remain calm and in control because this allows you for the game to flow through you. So when I say game now, this is in the context of COVID-19 and other things you do, and you can apply this to other things to do while you are, in, uh, while you are serving. And then also qualities of a champion include they talk differently, think differently, and act differently than normal people. When I say this in a positive way, not negative way, and they have their own composure, poise, and presence. And they will maintain balance under the most extreme adversity. That is the most important thing. Don't lose your control. Make sure that you're able to maintain your balance. And then the factors that may in, in be the champion in one include fail, fear of failure. We're always afraid of failing. And then it is until we try that we, we, can, we can learn how to do things better. Fear of being rejected, fear of speaking in public. A lot of us don't want to speak in public, but uh, this is a reality that um, we have to contend with. And then if you know you don't have that God, then you can build skills gradually. Speak first with two persons, three persons, four persons, and before you know, and you're able to uh, do better. Fear of what's happening or what people say is happening in the world event. Don't be disturbed about what people are saying. Although it's sometimes good to be mindful of them, but rather you internalize them, analyze them, and then make sense from what they are saying. And, and then be able to add your voice uh, in a way that is constructive and positive. Fear of moving out of your comfort zone with a new job or a new business. Some people are afraid. Some are posted from Lagos to Taraba, some from Taraba to Enugu. Everybody is afraid. When I was posted to uh, Ebony State, uh, when I got my uh, letter then from UI, uh, people said all sorts of things. Oh, Eboin. Uh, somebody first said the e two man being there. Another person said the brother was there. It was when the brother got there that he understood what poverty was. So I now wanted to change. But as I know, sorry, I won't go there. Uh, but then I had no option, but I was there. I was making effort to redeploy. Uh, but the, 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 stand, the state director did not allow that. But at the end of the day, I enjoy working uh, in a brain state. Then fear, um, then fear of the worst case scenario and fear of the unknown. So uh, we should have this in mind and then see how we can overcome this. But I will end with this, have a game plan. And this is a personal 
um, projects that I take on for all core members that I have contact with in the organization where I work, I ask them the question, what's your game plan? Do you want to waste this one year? You can take advantage of this one year. Game plan is an acronym. G stands for what are you going to gain in this service year? It's not about money. It's about skill. It's about habit. It's about knowledge. And then it depends on how you apply yourself. A stands for what are you going to add? What value are you adding to the system? What would they remember you for? Because for you to gain, you must contribute something in exchange for what you are gaining. And this is very key and this is very important. And then that is when people get recognition. I know some of the core members that are retained in NCDC today is because they apply themselves. While they were core members, NCDC deployed them to state as team lead. And they get to state, core members, you know, in the state, and you are talking to directors, you are the team lead. They don't know your status because they, they, they and they are able to discharge the responsibility very well because they have confidence, they have mastered the act, they understand the concept because they apply themselves. Among them, those core members who are not seniors, who always carry their bag when it is 30. And they saw what happened, they struggle for them to be retained at the end of the day. So M stands for who are you meeting? Take advantage of people you meet. You don't know where you will see, meet them, where you will need them tomorrow. Everybody is watching, everybody is assessing, everybody is making recommendations. But when they see you based on the impression they have of you, it's what will determine how they relate with you or how they want to engage with you in the future. E stands for what is your engagement plan. You must be practical. Okay, for me to be able to add value, for me to, to gain from here, for me to make sure that I, I build network, you must have plan. I must come to work early. I must take responsibility for my actions. I, when they give you, they, when you attend meetings, when they ask for who will take minutes, volunteer. In fact, that is the best way to get into an organization. When you get there, you are taking minutes, the next meeting, they say, who has the minute? And you read it. It means you have taken details of what has happened, the procedure, and then you understand the, 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 the situation very well. And then people will depend on you. Next time they want to call you, give you more responsibility. And that is the only way you can stand out. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attention. If there are questions, I'm ready to entertain them. Over. Thank you so, so much, Dr. Dr. Yaya Disu, um, thank you so, so much for that um, in-depth um, um, knowledge that you're just giving to intending core members. In case you don't know, Dr. Yaya um, Disu is the head of risk com at the NCDC. All right, so please, um, for all those that um, intending core members, please, um, your questions that weren't answered, we will definitely make sure we answer every question. So please don't think that um, because you're, you did not hear your question being read out that we've forgotten about it. We will answer every question and it will be on the portal, on, on your portal there. So just watch out for it also. Then this particular webinar video will also be uploaded on the NCDC YouTube channel. So you can also go back to see it, to watch and then be more informed, okay? And then um, we will be having Tenny next, but before Tenny also, it's important to help us um, to fill out um, um, the, the next form that you're seeing there right now. Um, please just help us with that. That is just before Tenny. We need to take this survey. It's important uh, for us. Um, this next poll is important, and it is, are you better informed on the protocol and measures to limit the risk? I'm sure you'll see it there, yeah? Please, just quickly, just fill it out for us so that we, we just see it, and then um, it's important we have that, okay? Thank you so, so much, everybody. Now, um, to have um, the next person um, now, we have the entertainer herself and um, that wishes to be the, the child of um, Dangote and um, um, wishes to be the child of <laughs> We're talking of none other, but the award winning, the award winning Tenny the Entertainer. Hello 
everyone, my name is Tenny Makanaki, Tenny Ola. And listen, COVID is nothing to joke with. COVID is something very serious. I had COVID, and honestly, it was a very life threatening moment in my life. And if I had known the things I know now, I would have not got through what I went through. So I want to share some tips with you. And it's an acronym called HANDS. H. Have your hands washed all times. At all times, at all intervals, make sure you always wash your hands. A. Always make sure that you sneeze into your elbow. M. Never go without wearing your face mask. D. Distance yourself from people. And S. Stay in place. Because I had COVID, I know the importance of vaccine. I think it's important to get vaccinated so that you can stay protected and you can also protect your loved ones, your family, your friends, and even your co-workers. With that being said, I just want to let you know, the power to stop COVID is in our hands. So let's come together to make sure that we fight this thing together. I'm passionate about the COVID-19 fight because I personally had COVID and I know how dangerous COVID is. We need to come together as people to take care of each other and make sure that we beat this thing, we fight it and we try our possible best to follow the guidelines to make us live a more comfortable life. Reminisce, reminisce, everything we might Oh, I'm hoping that my song will bring awareness and will also make people dance and be happy but will remind people that stopping COVID is in our hands. What inspired the song was my journey to recovering when I had COVID. You know, music helped me when I was recovering from COVID. I was listening to a lot of music, a lot of uplifting music. And I just wanted to make a song for people that were going through what that are possibly going through right now or did go through it. I wanted to make a song for them to remember that listen, the fight is not over. Let's wash our hands and let's follow the guidelines of hands. Sanitize your hand. Go back for you go for you six the four house. All right, thank you so so much. Tenny the entertainer now our hands a day. Um please, please, intending call members, everything day your hands, everything day your hands, yeah. And please for a healthier camp for healthy living, everything day your hands. Don't forget the most important things that we've learned here today. Don't forget um everyone um from the DG of NYC to DG of NCDC. Don't forget all Dr. Lado, Dr. Yaya, also said to us today, yeah? And then don't forget when you're going to camp, the important things that you should go with and the ones that you shouldn't come with. Please, let's just take notes. You can still watch this on the NCDC um, um, YouTube channel. You will watch this particular um, video again. So you don't forget all that was said today. All right, and then um, please all our um, August them at the top, everybody, um, let's also not switch off our the cameras because we're going to take a group picture right about now and it will be sent to everybody. It will be sent to everybody. So let's not switch off our cameras. Um, Dr. Disu, um, is you that I'm talking to because I know you switch it off now. Uh -huh. So that we can have a group picture at the end of this. All right. But then please let us um, quickly um, take this closing remark from um, our guy, the DG of um, uh, NYSC, Brigadier General Shraibu Ibrahim, to please give us this closing remark. And then we'll take a group photograph immediately afterwards. DG. Uh, and staff of the NCDC and directors, 
my call member and prospective call members. And uh, the Dr. Tunde, this has said it. The DGNC has spoken. Dr. Kurumari also said, please take this discussion very, very seriously. As Tony will say, our safe camp is all in our hands. Yes. Particularly you. So how you want it to be nice in you. So please address strictly to what we have said today. And I also want to advise, please be very careful on the use of the social media so that you don't put our camp in jeopardy. Always verify your information. Anything you are not sure, please don't post. So you must be very careful. You use the social media to promote a harmonious uh, and a seamless orientation exercise and uh, for the promotion of our unity and integration. And I also said, uh, please be very conscious of your security. Don't travel at night. So when you have course to pass the night, once the six o'clock, please stay put and pass the night in that, in that place. You get across to NYC Secretariat, military barracks, police, DSS, and so on. They will always be available to attend to you. So this, I want to use this opportunity to thank the DG and CDC once again, and also place it on record. And all the test kits that we provided in camp and other materials for the testing were provided by the NCDC. So we cannot thank the NCDC and the Presidential Steering Committee enough. So please also, as we said, take the vaccination very, very seriously. We are not going to force you, but it is incumbent on us to advise you for you to be safe and place so that we say that you should take this vaccine because all of us have also taken the vaccine, including Mr. President, the DG and CDC and others. So please let us have a safe camp by ensuring that you vaccinate. And uh, please, as I said earlier also, avoid any unethical practices. Don't give bribe to anybody in the name that you want to change posting or lobby for a place of punishment. Otherwise, it's not going to tolerate it. And once you, that is done and you are caught with the sanction, don't call to come with fake uh, documents. Ensure that the documents are genuine. If they are fake documents, don't show up. If you show up in a camp, you'll be arrested and handed over to the police. As we also said earlier, don't come to the camp with drugs. You no, know, NYC is a platform that can make you forever. Once you listen to advice, give it to us here but it is, uh, by all the speakers in this uh, Zoom meeting, webinar meeting. Please, I wish you a successful uh, reportage where you report to us in the camp. And uh, please stay safe and make sure that all our safety in our camp is in our hands, as uh, Tenny said. I want to thank the MC for making this uh, presentation very lively. Uh, we enjoyed the show. And uh, the DGNCDC, once again, the federal government, my prosperity core members, my core member, thank you for the enlightenment they are giving to uh, the prosperity command that will be joining us in camp next week. Thank you, and God bless you all. Thank, thank you so, so much, sir. Thank you. Um, thanks to everyone um, uh, for being part of this, um, this third edition um, of um, this um, webinar for uh, prospective um, core members. Um, it's, um, don't forget, it's a collaboration yeah. between the NCDC and the NYSC. Thank you so, so much. My guys, um, thank you for having me. Please don't forget, okay. we have to take um, a good picture now. Um, I don't know if the guys are ready. And then all um, participants, please. Um, participants, the speakers, the speakers, and then all those, um, um, those that um, said one or one thing or the other. Please, let's just quickly have a Yo, I've been disabled from sharing my picture, so maybe <laughs> the host can do that. <laughs> this <might be> <laughs> <laughs> That's how <laughs> <is. laughs> <laughs> Okay. So can we smile because this picture now, some of us will have our passport eye. Hold on, we your camera is do. upside down. Uh -huh. Who, my own? No, corrected, no, okay. Uh -huh. Please, where should we look? So we don't have our passport eyes, where should we look? Tell us when to smile.
Taking, right? Yeah. Has it been I taken? Think... Yes. Yes, it has. It has. Yes, All it right. Has. Thank you so, so much. Please, prospective core members, don't forget, go to the YouTube channel of NCDC. Don't forget, you will see everything in case you forget or you missed out. Go there, you will see everything that you need to see. You will hear them again. And so that, um, don't forget what our guy said, stop fake news. Um, stop sharing things that you're not sure of. It's not, it's not good for us. Thank you, sirs, my guys. My name is Yo. I'm an actor, presenter, uh, producer, and actor. Everything I had to do. One road, no the entire market. Thank you so, so much for having me here today. Thank you, sirs. Thank Please, you, can, we take, can we take the anthem to end today's um, webinar, please? Let's have the okay. national anthem. Thank you. OK.